Remy, say hi to YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. Over here, the camera's over here, buddy. <laughs> hey, what's up everyone, Danny here. It's been a really long time since I've showcased a PC on the channel featuring a current Intel CPU. The last one was well over a year and a half ago, and ever since then, it's just been Ryzen, 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 with the occasional, like, super budget old Sandy Bridge Intel build thrown into the mix. But right now, we're still in a pandemic, and there's been a parts shortage for months, and the only processors that seem to be readily available most of the time is from Team Blue. So I decided to go Intel this time around because of that. This is an entry level budget build that I teamed up with Micro Center to put together, which if you didn't know, Micro Center is the place to go to not only get the best prices, but to also get the best selection of parts in store compared to any other brick and mortar retailer. If you have one within driving distance of you, then I highly encourage you to take advantage of it because you're gonna be hard pressed to find better prices anywhere else. This build right here comes in right around the $600 price point, and that's about as low as I would recommend going if you're looking for a starter build that uses all brand new parts. Uh, but yeah, enough talking, let's check out the build. All right, let's go over what's all in the system. The processor I went with is the Intel i3-10100. I chose this because I think it provides great value for newer builders on a smaller budget since it comes in at only $100. This is also very readily available. Ryzen processors are constantly out of stock, either that or they're being price gouged for well above MSRP, but this right here can easily be found across multiple sellers for MSRP or less. Intel finally added hyper-threading to their i5s and i3s with the 10th generation. So we've got four cores and eight threads here, which pretty much makes this just like the i7-7700 from a few years ago. Now, sure, I get that you can't overclock this i3 like you can a Ryzen 3 processor, and the LGA 1200 platform is only compatible with a single generation of products, uh, but I think the low price reflects that, and you still have a good upgrade path if you wanted to eventually jump up to like an i5 or an i7. I, I still think this still provides plenty of value. To cool the CPU, we're sticking with the stock Intel cooler. It still bugs me how Intel hasn't updated the design in such a long time. Well, they kind of did. They have like a black version now, which brought back the copper slug and they put like a braided mesh on the cables, but that only comes with higher end processors. So the lower end customers that buy the i5s and the i3s, they kind of got left out on that one. All complaints aside though, this one's gonna work just fine. I guess I shouldn't complain too much since this one's free 90 free. The motherboard in this build is the MSI B460M Pro, which is a micro ATX board that comes in at $80. This is an entry level board that works well with our i3-10100 and would be capable of running an i5-10400 if you wanted to go that route. Most of the lower cost LGA-1200 boards look like this. They're pretty bare around the VRMs with no heat sinks. So just keep that in mind if you know that you eventually want to upgrade to an i7, in which case you should definitely invest in a better motherboard. The graphics card I went with is the 4GB PowerColor RX 5500 XT. There's nothing fancy about this model. It's got one of the plainest looking coolers attached to it, but it's also one of the lowest priced ones at $180. For building this price range, the max you'll be able to realistically spend on a graphics card is about $200, which is roughly a third of the total budget. And at that price, you've only really got two options in terms of current gen parts, either the 5500 XT or 1650 Super. These two cards are pretty much neck and neck in both price and performance, and I built with both and I don't have any team red or team green preferences, so I'd easily recommend either of them. If it comes down to it, get whatever's in stock, since right now there's somewhat of a graphics card shortage, uh, but thankfully it's not that bad in the lower end segment compared to like the RTX 3000 or RX 6000 series cards. For memory, we've got 16 gigabytes of black G-Skill rip jaws rated at 3200 MHz CL16, and this costs only $65. Nothing really special here about the RAM itself, but do note that the 10100 only supports speeds up to 2666 MHz, but the reason I went with 3200 MHz was because it was practically the same price, so why not get the better set just in case it gets utilized by something else in the future, or the processor gets upgraded uh, to like the i7, which supports up to 2933. For storage, we're using Micro Center's own in-house Inland Premium 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD. This is an awesome consumer NVMe drive with DRAM and it offers good speeds at a very affordable $60. And it's pretty much the bare minimum that you should start off with in my opinion. I choose this over a 128GB SSD 1TB spinning drive combo any day of the week. 
My personal preference is to start with at least half a terabyte solid state storage for the boot drive if you can when you're going with like an all brand new parts build. The power supply I used is the Gigabyte P550B, which comes in at $60. This is a budget unit that will be more than enough for lower to mid-range systems, and it does offer a couple more protections compared to other units in this wattage and price range, like say if you were to compare it to the Thermaltake Smart 600 watt. It also has plain black cables, which is nicer compared to the ketchup and mustard that you usually see with these entry-level power supplies. And last but not least, the case, which I went with the Lian Li Landcool 205M. Coming in at only $60, this case has great value without sacrificing quality. I built in the 205 mid tower in the past and I really liked it, and I knew the micro ATX variant wouldn't let me down. The 205M is well made all around and has solid construction, which is what we've come to know from the name Lian Li. The beefy tempered glass panel is nice and thick and it includes a lip so there's no holes drilled through the glass or any pesky shallow thumb screws or anything like that. There's an included intake and exhaust fan which moves a surprising amount of air through the case despite being a solid front panel. And the basement and backside has plenty of space to make cable management a breeze. I think it's one of the nicer micro ATX towers out there. Now let's take a look at the build summary where we come in a bit under $600 before tax if you're able to take advantage of the CPU and motherboard combo discount at Micro Center. But if you're not able to, then it's still not that bad. The additional $20 will just push the total just a hair over $600 before tax. This is what the build looks like fully completed. I'll post the build sequence in the near future as well to show how simple it was to put together. But overall, I'm really liking the simple stealth black look. Let me know down in the comments if you prefer a simpler looking build like this or something that's filled to the brim with RGB flowing out of every single part. Now let's see how this build performs. For reference, the 10100 is running at stock, the 16 gigabytes of RAM is running at the maximum supported 2666 megahertz, and the 5500 XT was overclocked 100 megahertz on the core and 100 megahertz on the memory, which is a pretty modest overclock that should be achievable by most if not all cards. This build at its price is definitely meant for gaming at 1080p. However, I also tested at 1440p with identical settings just to see which titles could actually handle that resolution. So let's check out the benchmarks.
All right, so those were the benchmarks, and I actually think the build did pretty well. It could play all the titles thrown at it just fine, but as you did see, the AAA titles like Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, those were far from reaching triple digit FPS. But to be fair, those aren't competitive online games anyways, and I personally think those can be enjoyed at close to 60 FPS. You don't necessarily need like 120 or 140 for constant FPS on those. Also, just for fun, I wanted to see how this build would do if someone was interested in taking it to dabble in a little bit of streaming. Now, I don't think anyone should expect super great streaming capabilities out of this considering it's got so many entry level parts and comes in at the price that it does. People easily invest multiples of thousands of dollars into streaming specific PCs. But if you're just looking to get your feet a little bit wet, this is what you can expect from this build. I'll start with the bad news first which is if you're looking to stream the latest AAA titles that are already hard to run, as you saw in the benchmarks, then you're gonna have a bad time. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Cyberpunk being run without streaming, streaming with OBS using X264 at very fast, and streaming with hardware encoding set to balanced. Output was 1080p 30fps, and you can see clearly that both software and hardware encoding just look like a stuttery mess. I tried changing the different encoder presets as well as downing the output resolution to 720p and that still didn't cut it. The results were the same. Cyberpunk was just too hard to run since as you can see in the original benchmark, there wasn't much headroom left over in the CPU and GPU to begin with. I should note though that this was only what the stream output looked like. The gameplay on my end was fine with zero stutter at all. Now, if you're looking to do just chatting or lighter esports titles, then you're in luck. Here's Rainbow Six Siege with the same side-by-sides. You do see a performance hit whether you do X264 or hardware encoding, but the frame rate was high enough that the loss isn't that big of a deal, and the 1% and 0.1% performance were also plenty high as well. So there you have it, an entry level PC that doesn't break the bank, it looks clean and sleek, and it gets you into the world of PC gaming, and has a little bit of streaming capabilities as you just saw. What I like about this build is that all the parts are pretty competitive with the used market. It would take a decent amount of effort to find used deals that can beat the price to performance ratio of all the components in this build, with the exception of the graphics card, which is always the exception no matter what. That's where you can save the most money if you look in the used market. If you pick up like an RX 580, you could probably get it for $50 less than this 5500 XT and it'll have similar performance. Um, but everything else though, I think it makes a lot of sense to just go brand new. With that said, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the build. Let me know down in the comments if you think it's worth actually upgrading the i3 to an i5-10400 for an additional $50. I was pretty close to doing it, but I ended up going with the i3 because uh, for me personally, it was more interesting to use the cheaper part. Uh, but what would you do though? Um, but yeah, other than that, I wanna give a huge thanks to Micro Center for working with me on this build. And I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for supporting the channel. And yes, I know a lot of you out there are still waiting for the Land Party Stories Social Distancing Edition. I know I missed my deadline of finishing that by the end of 2020, uh, but just believe me when I say it's one of those projects where it's ready when it's ready and I can't release it until I'm 100% happy with it because of how important and personal of a project it is for me. Um, but don't worry, I'll give you some footage right now to nibble on as I continue to work to wrap it up. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, and yeah, I'll see y'all down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Cooked all the way through? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Man, this guy already killed it. Uh-huh. It's fucking delicious. Team, help! Go, go, go! Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. No! no! Yeah. I even tried. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> no floor top. Come on. Oh. I have failed. I have failed you, Nick. Doing it for face. No, it's hard. Does anyone else want double patties in particular? Did you drop anything? No, I did not drop anything. You didn't have an asset. Okay, actually, I did drop one top. <laughs> I, I threw it away, of course.
I, I don't threw know. it away. You said you were going to do that. <laughs> Melissa <laughs> was upstairs. She video. saw me. Yes, I'm not eating tater tots. Double. She, she singles. She saw me. Didn't I throw in the tot? Yes, he did. I was single. Uh, 